Hello, everybody. Sup, blood. Sup, sup blood. You is down with the kids, I'm assuming. Yes. Greetings, fellow kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. That was, that's also a reference that's fucking old now. <laughs> anyway. Hello. We're hello. here in the forest with Karma because... And Karma and their amazing uh, hover um, cravat. The hover cravat. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. not... I mean, as far as I can tell, from what it looks like, because it's got like little shake lines around it, I, I think it's got being a tal a squirrel has got a hood on and it's holding onto a blouse. Oh, that's the Red Riding Hood one. Yep. And shouldn't we be saying he? Because <clears throat> the game badly describes things. Yes, so because I'm I'm not sure if Karma actually is identifying as a woman when she's when he's dressed like this or a man. Not because yes or other. Game explained bad. Game explained bad now. But male, definitely male to start off with, then dresses as female so people stop coming on mm. to them. What? Except, yeah, basically everyone comes on to him when he's female, when he's male. So dresses and as a very pretty woman. And women don't when dressed as pretty lady. Yes. Who apparently has boobs, according to the person who flirted with them. Yes. I mean, there's a slight curve there, but I'm not thinking really. pectorals rather than boobs. Yeah, and then you've got the cravat, which actually gives the illusion of more volume there. Yes. So it's quite clever. I remember it, mentioning that previously. Yes, I think you probably did, yes. Um, we're not sure. We're going to go with he, I think. I'm, I'm going to try and go with he. But since it's yeah. a bit up in the air, I'm not sure. So. I mean, the thing is, I was thinking we could go they, but I think Karma would be really annoyed if someone used they. <laughs> so what the fuck are we going to do? I think Karma would be really annoyed just fucking... In general. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I also found it amusing that no one worked out that the mysterious swordsman was Karma, who looks exactly the same. Yeah, we, we did coat. mention that. It's just sort of like, we know that person. Yeah, it's just, oh look, they're in a different coat. Terrifying. I'd never know who they are. Who is this mysterious Superman? <laughs> who could they be? What do you think, Clark? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, the whole thing about Clark Kent is, is allegedly... That um, it's a demeanor thing. As Clark, uh -huh. he's he's that, just not that, confident, etc. Well, that doesn't come through at all in anything I've ever seen or read. So no, but that is the explanation. I mean, he's more clumsy, but he looks the same. Yeah, but that is the explanation that is given in um Man of Steel because I rewatched it the other day just because the the dildo rockets are hilarious. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen Man of Steel, watch it. You can probably get it second hand for two quid. It's great. It's no, it's an all right film to be fair. I mean, there's lots of things you in my local go... sex. Sorry. Fifty p in oh C E X. Oh right, I, um, I just heard sex at the end. It's because yes. well, I don't remember that in the film. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a very I think um, a fairly strong message against it from what I remember. Um, but um, there is a what was it there at the very end where he first actually. Because basically he ends up going to join the Daily Planet after every after it, he's been revealed as Superman, and there's this kind of in, this indication that well Lois has already worked out who he is. Um, yeah. So the idea was that she already knows, but other people don't, and she's the only person who's been up close to him. So right, that makes way more sense. <laughs> the, the way I think of it is people are basically are just saying that's Superman. Yeah. Shh. Just pretend that we don't know it's Superman. I don't want to piss off the giant super being. I mean, um, I remember the New Adventures of Superman, a terrible series from the 90s. Um, oh, there was a bit where Time Traveller turned up from the future and goes, <gasps> Lois Lane, the stupidest woman in history. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh yeah. Here we are. If you don't come, if you don't come at me like you truly meant to stab me, you'll never land a hit. Yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, uh... It it has been about what? two two weeks since I first saw. Car We're skipping ahead apparently what? because story <laughs> whiplash storytelling. Go. I didn't even cut. No. <laughs> it's been about two weeks since I first saw Karma here in the forest practicing with Garland. Who's now practicing in their less practical attire? Possibly. No, not Garland. I wasn't talking about Garland. Oh, Karma oh, was in Karma. the um, dueling Karma. outfit before. Yeah, true. 
I've come here every night since then, although I never stay as long as Karma. Since I actually... Hang on. Though I never stay long as Karma. What? Mm. Word and English good. Since I actually have work to do in the mornings. Mm. Here, I, here I come. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna elbow you in the gut. Yeah. Their two swords clash, and Karma laughs as he throws Durian back. And oh, now, 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 yes, it's definitely he because well, this might be he from from not Cinder's point of view, who's an idiot and an asshole. Yes, he so... th- he he throws Durian back. We have back an unreliable and... narrator. <laughs> we have an unreliable everyone. Throws Durian back and taps her lightly on the shoulder with his sword. Which it turns out is a broadsword and just massive bruise. <laughs> <laughs> that makes four hits. And that one was easy. Is that the best you can do, Jorgen? I know. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, crying. I noticed that Karma, every time Karma practices with Urien, he's in his Miss Karma disguise. He says it's because of the curse and he does not want Urien to fall in love with him. Maybe he's just massively arrogant. Well, I Who think, said, and he also assumes that everyone's straight. Yes, although I feel like it's a curse. It doesn't. I, I feel like a curse goes against your um, natural incl- inclinations because it's. It, to be honest, it feels like kind of a rape drug kind of situation in that in yeah. that scenario anyway. So, kind of magic or hypno, but the person yeah. who's cursed with it isn't the one who gets affected by the hypno. Mm-hmm. No, no, they are. No, but they're not. I'm confused. I've confused myself now with description. Yeah. <laughs> because hypno knocks you out, basically, doesn't it? Yeah, Ish. magic or hypno. We can accept magic or hypno. It's, okay. um, have you ever seen, anyone who hasn't seen, uh, who's seen uh, Bread Dwarf, you know, and they get the <laughs> sex, um, uh, the sex appeal virus. Yes. And, and takes it. Animal and, magnetism. Yeah. And basically has to run away screaming. Yes. <laughs> oh, I am not going to quote Cat. I am not going to quote Cat. Anyway, isn't he being overdramatic? I doubt someone like Urian could fall in love with Karma. Magic, you tit. Mm. Subtle and quiet. Garland tells me you're usually good at that. Here yeah, I am, sir. Mm. I just, I just really fancy women. So... <laughs> Then why the exception today? Oh, is it only today? But, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, sure. Yeah. Darling, it won't be because of the way I'm dressed with it. I'm still not used to it. What? No. That's literally, I'm assuming, how you met. (laughs) I... Mm. (laughs) Hit the nail on the head, have I? Not very chivalrous to hurt a lady, of course. That logic applies to men as well. Yeah. It's not chivalrous to hit people. No, generally. Unless they've got, like, armour well, and shit. I mean, I'm just thinking about medieval chivalry, which is basically, don't murder rich people. Basically, so. yeah. <laughs> yes, if they've got chivalry. enough armour to deal with it, don't hit Kid- them. You kidnap them, right, after you've beaten them up Yeah, but you're not allowed to murder them. in luxury and then rent and sell them back to their, their estate. That's very chivalrous. Murder, yeah. not so much. Oh, no, unless they're poor. Oh, yeah, that's all right. If they're poor, then, you know, take a lawnmower to their army. You know, it's, <laughs> it's everywhere. No one cares about peasants. Until they're your peasants, then they matter. Yes. Because they're where you get your money from. <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> your enemy is an enemy, Urian. Even if your enemy is a delicate flower like myself, stabs her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, delicate flower. Urian, you should hit him on the head for that. <laughs> what the prince says. He's not delicate at all. Urian laughs, and I scowl at her. Is she laughing at me? In a joke, you. You want to come? Yeah, you and Carl must need to get along. I doubt it. Well, you're here, aren't you? <laughs> oh, Princess, you wound me. I'm bored, that's why I'm here. Oh. You always say that. I don't believe it. Never have, never will. You wound me where Urian's blade cannot. My body. <laughs> Wow. 
well played. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> Something flashes in Yurian's eyes as she readies her sword again. Karma stands ready as Yurian rushes at him with her sword. Mm. Very slowly, their swords clash again. I wonder. Karma, your back's open. Kicking the butt. <laughs> Karma turns. Yurian taps him on the shoulder and laughs aloud. Yeah, I did it. A single hit. You're told you have a weakness too, Karma. <laughs> Ears listening. <laughs> no, it wasn't a weakness. It's a lack of sleep catching up with me. That That's seems a like a weakness. Yeah, that is a weakness. Why did he listen to me? He told Garlin the other day that it was crucial to only listen and watch the most important things. Ugh. All right, practice is over for now. I can see Garlin is coming for his practice. Karma walks to the corner to have a drink. And there's presumably some form of liquid. Mm. I should probably head back to the tavern soon, but there is something I want to see first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm I'm assuming that the curse is the reason why she doesn't magically fall in love with um, him when he's dressed in his bloke clothes. That's true. I'm assuming, because otherwise this makes no sense. Well, those two aren't cursed, are they? Apparently. They're no. Just there for I mean, for some reason. For, uh, I don't know. Turned up. <sighs> Turned up, got exiled from the court, makes them perfect. On her way out, Yurian gives a solemn nod to Garland. She pauses to say something to him and then looks Yay! at me, noticing my vague curiosity. Oh. Yeah, I'll just make you more good swordsman, Karma is. I have seen him fight, and Karma is a good swordsman. There's no doubt about it. Yet, is practising with him really so special? Oh, God, I've forgotten what his voice was. Uh, Nicole. Nicole. He's fast on his feet and quick with his reactions. Yeah, he's actually putting the train under. Yeah, under. Mm -hmm. Even better than most of the commanders in the valley. I can second that. Even better than Ross. Remember him? Kind of afro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bleed, painted a lot. The first commander we trained under, the one that punished so slow learning with extra exercises. Yeah, and they took ages because they were slow. <laughs> oh, that did more exercise than I did. <laughs> Sound about being distracted. I, I, was, I was watching the way you swung your sword to make sure you didn't hurt yourself because apparently you're a del delicate little flower. Yeah, apparently I almost hold my bum, do I? You've always been overprotective. Well, I, uh... They both suddenly stop to look at Karma, who's smiling slyly on the side. Why does he have that look on his face? Looks like he's coming on to someone at the other end of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sign. We can't keep the commander waiting. Garland shakes his head, his expert Russian snapping back into something more serious. Right. The two exchange quick farewells before Yurian waves and steps out of the clearing, leaving Garland with Karma. You're in a dress today. Well spotted, deep shit. <laughs> Don't get me so opposed to hurting me when I'm in a dress. Or are you worried about ruining it? No. See, I'll, that'd actually be my, my great concern would be where you're in the forest, it's probably quite a low hemline. It might get caught on roots or something and torn a bit not in a way that affects the fight or anything but you know it gets mucky around the bottom yeah i mean apparently it's a nice dress yes. apparently the only dress yes that that exists yes or something. no that's just so strange you move so well even on a long dress but yes yurian did mention almost stepping on it once should have done hit the bugger in the stomach when they stumble Yep. Impossible. I am the picture of elegance. Of course, sir. If you say so. Slipping now. Karma shrugs off Garland's comment. The two ready their swords, then get right into practice. Sword, though. Mm hmm. Yeah, Union has yeah. taken over Garland's. I heard. I. Fuck. I read pistol then. Um. <laughs> Urian has taken over Garland's patrol now, so that Garland can get in some practice time. You mean they take it in turns? 
So, Carlin, have you told the Union yet? That you want to get into her pants? Hmm. Oh! No. Uh, the conversation that Karma always has with Garland is the real reason I stay behind to watch them practice. Ah, soap opera. I don't understand why. It's <laughs> basically it, isn't it? It's just like, she's just like, I'm fucking bored. I sweep <laughs> and that's fucking it. I don't understand why Garland answers Karma's questions if doing so makes him so depressed. Will you ever say anything to her, Garland? No, that will be your job when we d we intrude on their relationship. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Ugh. Why don't you just confess to her already? It hurts my brain. Get on with it. Ugh. Karma lands an easy hit on Garland, who sighs in response. Ugh. Whenever Garland thinks about Urien, he gets distracted. I do not understand his feelings at all. But seeing him remain quiet frustrates me. Oh, fuck. I, I can't do Nicole's voice and then switch, switch to that kind of posh accent. I, I, I immediately go for Scouse. <laughs> Urien is talented and poised. I could never be good enough for her. You'll never win a woman's heart if you don't compliment her looks as well, Garland. What? Uh, no. Mm. Mm. Try complimenting mm. her brain, her fighting style, yeah. the fact that, you know, she's a person. Her choices, her, yeah, well, yeah, things she has control over are always quite a good thing as well. Yes. Oh, that, that, that thing that you do is amazing. The, uh, the, the skills. was name with the doodad. Yeah, the skills that you p possess. That's always a good thing. Things they've worked hard over. Well, she's pretty too. Nope. See, it went straight into fucking Scouse. I can't do it. Well, she's pretty too. Nope. Beautiful. And then there's me. Uh. Oh, yeah. You're so pig ugly, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Terrible. Oh, yeah. It's there's terrible. nothing you can do. Um. Well, I could, I could see why you wouldn't. No, fuck it, we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they both knights? Haven't they been training together for a long time? I can see why you wouldn't tell her. <laughs> Kiss him off until he does it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, because she's uh, better than me. No, because if you told her and she refused, then it would be difficult afterwards. You understand, princess? Of course I understand. I'm not stupid. I'm insensitive and antisocial, but not stupid. No, I... I didn't mean it like... No. <laughs> fucking hell. I can't do it. I didn't mean it like that. Fucking hell. Don't take offence, girl. It's just the way she talks. Like an asshole. <laughs> princess is a fragile flower with all her petals always curved inwards. What? But she's closed off, I think, is, All right. is what they're, they're insinuating there. She's a small bud that probably gets trodden on. Yes, we're trying to make her bloom, effectively. Like covering her, her manure. Yes. Um. What does that even mean? See, if Urian were prob if, if, I, if it were Urian, she'd probably know. But I'm just as confused as you are. I don't think so. I don't think anyone understands half of the fluff Karma speaks. <clears throat> As I weave love and dedication to every single one of my words, there's a beauty in deciphering them, also an irritation. But enough idle chatter, sir. Let us continue our training. I end up staying longer than I intended by the time I consider returning to the tavern. Garland and Karma are wrapping up for the night. I have a question for Karma, so I wait until Garland leaves before I approach him. <clears throat> Here, Princess, were you seeking out a long time with me by chance? <laughs> I have enough of that every day when we run errands. I just have a question for you. You always come to the right person. Sparkle, sparkle. What, what can I do for you, Princess Henry Bonk? You always ask Garland the same question every time you train, and he always tells you that he cannot confess. Karma nods in acknowledgement, but his attention is on his sword, as it always is. Um, he inspects it carefully before sheathing it. Yeah. It frustrates me. You're frustrated? 
and that look of his always annoys me too. He, like he's a smug, arrogant fuck. Oh my. It is annoying. Did you want to ask me why he won't confess? Because you're so frustrated. Yes. I suppose after almost two months, I do know you a little better. You do not know anything about me. And I do not know anything about karma either. Confessing <clears throat> isn't easy, dear Henry Bonk. Surely you must realise that the possibility of rejection is a significant deterrent. But if you never ask, you never get an answer, and the stress of worrying stays with you and ruins everything. <gasps> Why are you staring at me? Is that the reason you're so blunt, <clears throat> Princess? Probably. Blunt? You are far more blunt than I am. Princess Henry Punk, you truly are amusing. You're as sharp as a knight's blade. And as blunt as a stick. I am not amusing. Nothing I've ever done is funny. Ever. That is a matter of opinion, darling. He really is insufferable. Sky glitter. Sky glitter. Spackle, spackle. And yet I still come to him for advice. <clears throat> the scariest part of a confession is the possibility of rejection. Or rest. Um, imprisonment, depending on the, the confession. Yeah. Yeah. Depend, depends on what you did, to be honest. Or what you're confessing to. It doesn't even matter if you actually did it at that point, really, if you're confessing to it. You know. Yeah, true. Can you imagine loving someone and finding out they don't feel the same way about you? Yes, because I have an imagination. Yes, and also because, you know, life sucks sometimes. And yeah. then you get over it. Because fucking be a grown-up. Sorry. <laughs> my thoughts shift to the king and my chest tightens. Princess Henry Punk, look at my giant low-res features. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Karma reaches out his hand to brush a strand of hair out of my face, and I bite him. Oh, effectively, yeah, well done, Cinderella. I slap it away without realising. He pulls his hand back with a gentle sigh. Steam-powered. <sighs> it's on, oh, no, no, it's a pneumatic wrist. <laughs> He's my a mecha karma. Princess. No, I cannot imagine. No? Loving someone and finding out they do not feel the same way. I always ne knew my father never loved me. My understanding is different from what Karma is referring to. Besides, I no longer hold any love in my heart for the king. I've already given up hope on him. Right? It's a good thing you haven't experienced the rejected love, princess. It is one of the worst feelings. Karma asked to be alone, so I returned to the tavern by myself that night. Uh, okay. O okay, I guess we're on uh, we're on his path Come then. Karma, good, good, <laughs> good, 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 son, good. I do not know why I agree to this when nothing changes. Today, I am once again out in town with Karma, running errands. Since we've been partners, he insists on me coming with him every day. Why do you need a new dress? Clothing? Um, it, this, this, this one hasn't been washed in months. <laughs> because a lady needs all kinds of dresses in her closet. Variety is, a, is key when you want to make a good impression. Why would you want to make a good impression on people in a disguise? A disguise is meant to conceal you. It does not exist to be flaunted. Oh, no, darling. I only wear the dis disguise to stop the curse from working on people. It's not really meant to conceal anything, but the fact I am a man. So it's, it's the, the claws ripping through the ether. Yeah, it's uh, weird. It just distracted me. Being doted on by a married woman or by a woman in love with another man is especially troubling. Is the curse really that powerful? Probably. It's a curse. Yeah. Well, you'll want to rewrote at the memories of everyone on Earth, so you know. Mm. Yes. Except uh, like a, a tiny few. Karma leads me over to a dress shop and, and our conversation pauses when he goes into the store and to give specifications for a new dress. When we leave, Karma suggests going to some place to reward me for all my hard work. You're treating me like a puppy. Why wouldn't I, darling? You've been helping me for a while now. What is this feeling? Gratitude? 
Karma does owe me for everything I've done for him. Oh, don't like you. So why do I feel like this? You know, it would be much easier if you just help me carry bags. Oh, there. Let's buy one of those cupcakes. Karma cuts through my suggestions easily. Does he really dislike work so much that he'd rather pay me off for helping him? Karma takes me to a stand showcasing all kinds of cupcakes. There are some with coloured frosting, others with fancy decorations. There are some especially eye-catching, like bright blue cupcake decorated with little stars. Star cake. The bloke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. You think you catch your fancy, ladies? All of them. I wouldn't them. know. I can't see my own wares. All of them, actually. I'll... Oh, no, that's you. <laughs> I, I even went like into that. the voice. Oh. Fuck. All of them, actually. Alas, I do not think eating them all would be good for my diet. Might be good for your mental health, though. No, I'm just saying. What do you think, princess? We'll share what really. I turn back to the cupcakes, which I realise are big enough to share between two people. No, cupcakes are not. No, I refuse. Cupcakes it's not are not a cupcake. Big... If you share, if it's big enough to share. No, it's, it's got to fit cake. into a cup. Am I choosing one for myself or one that Karma would like? I guess he is treating me, but two yeah, cupcakes but... Chat, catch my eyes. One has a tiny little creature sitting on top of the frosting. Seems to be a lizard of sort. Chameleon! We're choosing that yeah. one. I, though it is strange, the colours remind me of Karma's dress. Karma chameleon. Mm. Uh, my God, there's actually... A, it... that, that's what they've done. My God, they've actually done the thing. Okay. They've actually done the thing. The other cupcake is decorated with white chocolate pearls. Those pearls okay. are small and somehow cute, but Karma might like the other cupcake. Well, that, that'd probably go for the lizard because he's got a lizard on it. To yeah, be that, that's basically that's it. That's... Well, we get the magic flower to tell us what it thinks is the right, right selection. Anyway, oh no, it gets on both. It, it goes on matter. both. Okay. Yeah, it's just where I point it. Uh, let's go for the lizard because chameleon. I like, I like lizards. Yeah. So it's got a lizard on it. It's, Hello, I'm a lizard. No, um, you know. <laughs> I'll have that one. Also, the one with the lizard takes more effort to yeah. make. Yeah. It's more special because it's more intricate then. We put some balls on it. Basically, yeah. The one <laughs> with the... Oh, my, is that the chameleon? Oh, God, they did the thing. They did the thing. They did the thing. A chameleon. It is a chameleon. Oh, that's adorable. So we'll take one of those. I was thinking he'd like it for the colours, not the chameleon. I wasn't thinking that he'd like it at all, to be honest. I didn't give a shit. Um, whatever that I think, is. I didn't think that most people bought things based on what colours they like, they were wearing. No. Usually, it's, Well, unless they really, really like those colours, I suppose. Everything uh, must be purple. <laughs> that's just a you thing. But then I am... <laughs> Everything must be blue or green is my, my, my particular failing, so... Or teal, I suppose. Yeah. Or whatever that is. Let's go enjoy this somewhere else, shall we? Okay. Or, or not in the middle of the bakery, which does not have any seating, apparently. Karma leads me to the middle of the plaza. The two of us find a table in the middle of the plaza. Okay. He walks off barcode. to... Barcode. Look, there's a barcode in the background. What? Oh, it's one of the places is called Barcode. Why? Okay. I go. don't know. That's weird. That is weird for a medieval setting. He walks off to get a knife and a fork before returning and handing the set to me. Do we really need a knife and a fork to eat a cupcake? So, before we got your dress and you distracted me with cupcakes, we were talking about your curse. I know my mouthful. I know where were we? It's not an interesting topic at all. No, this powerful magic that has affected my life, you know. It's, uh, I was glad to have gotten off that tangent, to be honest. Why don't you want to talk about it? And who from our past are you, really? Ah, that's a question. Yeah. You have your secrets just as I do, princess. But the whole point of pairing up is to help each other with our curses. I'm trying to help you. Let me do a fucking good deed, you bitch. Stop deed blocking me. <laughs> That's the title. <laughs> I need to write that one down. 
Okay. Princess, you want to help me? Uh, not particularly. Sorry, I did actually write that one down. <laughs> Only because it is necessary that I help him so that he can help me. I haven't made any progress helping you, though. You said you would provide me with opportunities. I'm not very good at that, am I? I'm sorry, princess. Well, I don't think I've done anything for you, either. But, princess, you've been helping me for the last few weeks. Whether or not it is an obligation, you are still good company. Really? Eh? Uh, good company? No one has ever told me that before. They only chide me for being difficult to speak with. Oh, God. Oh, right. Ooh. Oh, he's so cute! Ooh. I, I, I feel the need Why to make it there? cupcakes. Why are you just cut it in half, you weirdo? Yeah, I need to make this cupcake Plate somehow. It's huge. It is big, isn't it? It's the That's size a of a hand. Yeah. A big hand. Karma starts cutting the cupcake, his knife sliding through the frosting and cake with ease. Because it's a knife. I have definitely never seen such refined manners for a simple dessert. Your princess! <laughs> That's just a picture of someone who seems to quite like cake, to be honest. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've seen you make that face. Mmm, cake. <laughs> <laughs> what was your life like before the curse, princess? I have no need to tell you any of that. No, it's not necessary, but I am curious. Would I be doing a good deed in telling him? I don't think so. How about we trade off fact for fact? You give me a story today, and I'll give you one tomorrow. What makes you think I'm interested in your life, bitch? <laughs> you do keep asking me about my curse. That is a major part of my life. Because you know how they're all kind of ironic punishments, you see. So. Only because we're working on breaking our curses. Okay, then. We won't talk with, about the past or any secrets. We could talk about this cupcake instead. What? Why does he always insist on changing the topic? Karma cuts the chameleon in, on top in half. I notice he gives himself the head, which is a lot cuter, while I get stuck with the tail. Eat that butt. Go on. Eat that frosting butt. Nah. Chameleons are little lizards that can blend into their surroundings, but generally don't. They mainly actually use it for um, mating displays. Thank you, fact man. <laughs> I appreciate the facts, fact man. Is he willing to go this far to avoid the subject? Well, apparently, yes. When I was a child, my father used to call me a chameleon. What? <laughs> he thought I was a lizard. He was a bit strange. I, I hid a lot to avoid responsibilities. Oftentimes, no one would f could find me. Not my father, nor the servants. In other words, you got punished because you're fucking slack. Is is basically what we're seeing here, yeah, and you got. It could, be, it could have been from an anxiety thing, though. It could have been, but basically, uh, you hid to get out of punishment. Now you have to stand out. Is effectively what we've got. Yeah. Then that doesn't look like sweat running down his head. Mm, uh, no, it, it definitely uh, looks like uh, uh, another bodily fluid. If he had servants, that makes him a noble. Which merchant? Mm -hmm. I was out searching for a mythical creature in our garden because I'm an idiot, and I came upon the chameleon. It was this. It ran away. Small <laughs> small lizard, and I'd only found it because I was looking for something fantastic. The lizard on the cupcake does not seem all that fantastic. Fuck you! Amazing. <laughs> My father explained <clears throat> what it was to me, then he started calling me his silly little chameleon. It was ridiculous, but he said I was always very good at hiding, so it suited me. Did mm -mm. I? I want to phrase it then. I'm not sure if the father was being an asshole or actually just kind of a cute nickname. Yeah, I think maybe both. Yeah. What is it, Princess? It seems like you're still good at hiding. You hide behind your disguise and keep many secrets. I suppose I'm still a chameleon then, hiding in plain sight. I, I don't think that nickname makes any sense. Sometimes they don't have to. Nicknames don't have to make sense to be endearing, Princess. Can we please just get back to the subject at hand? Yes, this cupcake. Nom, 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 nom. 
if you insist on sh insist on sharing a story for a story, then I will tell you something about me. I hate cupcakes. <clears throat> oh, you don't seem the type to want to share. I normally don't see any reason for sharing things about my past. No, mother once told me that to confide in someone else was a weakness. But more than that, I was always worried that others would judge me. No one has ever wanted to listen to me. I know enough about others' opinions of me to know they think I'm the one at fault. Always. <clears throat> I wouldn't judge you, princess. Mm -mm. I mean, I wouldn't judge you for not wanting to say anything to me. I divulge nothing to you, after all. A story for a story. That's the deal, right? I expect you to keep it. Or rather, a fact for a fact. Sky's blue. Yes. <laughs> he just shouts that and leaves. <clears throat> <clears throat> it is not like I have to tell him everything, just something about myself. I'm with an asshole. I will tell you about my life at the palace. It's not as if it's a secret, though I doubt Karma would understand. Ever since Mother died, the palace has been a cold place. She paid for central heating. <laughs> Why the surprise? Is it because you seem Amalagni and Rod and assume you're all one big happy family? I do have to admit the princess <laughs> seems quite gentle. Prince Rod is quiet because he's mute, but he seems to be like an honourable man. When I saw you on the princess in the dress at the dress store, Princess Amalagni isn't very nice, is she not? Her kindness is uh, fragile at best. She tries far too hard for it to be genuine. Her insistence is irritating. I have never wanted to be friends with her. Also, wasn't it a toy shop that they they went to, I not a dress so. shop? I think so, yeah. Because there were the dolls that were exactly the same as her dolls, which apparently were worse. <clears throat> oh, yeah. You are right. The king took a second wife after my mother died, as if she never mattered to him. Yes, that's how love works. Yes. Karma is silent and I continue to talk, my emotions loosening my tongue. I had meant to stop there, but the words kept coming. The only one who ever showed me any affection in the palace was Mother. The king never paid much attention to me in the palace, but he treats Rod and Emma Lagny um, far better than he has ever treated me. What was your mother like? Oh, a bit of a bitch, really. Oh, she's really tall and you can never see her face in frame. All of my fondest memories are of her. She always with me in the palace, teaching me right from wrong. She taught me how not to show weakness and who to speak with. Who to speak with? Needless conversation is useless. People are often very likely to lead you astray. That was the reason I never saw any reason to speak with the townsfolk. <gasps> ah, will you judge me as everyone else does? No, princess, I'm not judging you, but I'll judge the fuck out of your mother. Yes. I'm just a little sad. Sad? Why would he be sad? Sounds like you lived an empty life. It was not an empty life. Well, it does and everything. But it sounds as if your mother separated you from everyone. It wasn't as if the town folk would have accepted me anyway. Mother said they were not to be trusted. Princess, about your mother. I will not hear you speak ill of mother. No, I only had the question about... about your... Mm. mother. Karma coughs <coughs> and mother. I... Mother. <coughs> Stop it. <coughs> <coughs> I pause to stare at him as he clears his throat. I am not 100% shiny. Oh, what is it? This... Oh, God! I hear the change immediately. His voice is lower, far lower. The soft gentleness what? gone. Karma puts to his hand to his throat and grumbles. <clears throat> Karma's voice is teetering at the edge of sounding unmistakably male. I've always wondered how he's able to change his voice, but I always forget to ask him about it. What happened to your voice? What the? Oh, it's Miss Karma, is it? Oh, no, it's a woman. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, she's a scouse. Oh, didn't yeah. mean to do that. Didn't mean to do she has that. no eyes, therefore she's scouse. <clears throat> yep. I turn to see a young market girl approaching us. She looks at Karma adoringly. I've always wanted to speak with you, Miss Karma, ever since you complimented my dress that one time at the dress store. <laughs> Your dress is lovely as today as always, Miss Karma, since it's the only dress you seem to have. <laughs> Karma. <laughs> mm. 
Miss Karma, are you okay? I am quite fine. Eh? I cannot help but giggle as the girl takes a step back, looking shocked by Karma's now deep voice. Karma curses again in his deep voice before forcing a bright smile on his face. Excuse me, I'm feeling under the weather. I notice that he's trying to change the pitch of his voice, but the highness is only annoying now rather than soothing now. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Karma turns to me urgently, but I'm too amused to offer any sort of assistance. <laughs> Fair enough, lad. let's just tease him a bit. What is it, Miss Karma? Karma's smile is forced and his eyes are glaring at me. I laugh once again, not able to help myself. His expression softens, but... Only... Ah, no. I'm going to tease him. I'm not going to leave. We're just going to tease him. He obviously wants to leave, but I cannot help myself because I'm a bitch. 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 Miss Karma, I do wish you would say something. <gasps> at the very least, you should thank you, this girl for her compliment. Oh no, it's quite all right. Come on, Karma, you're usually the most charming person on these streets. Hey. Mm. Sounds like he is dying now. <laughs> I cannot help but start laughing again. The small annoyance on Karma's face seems to dissipate completely. Leaving. <laughs> Bob's he takes my hand and curtsies politely to the girl as he pulls me away. Karma, you sound sick. It's it's run out, I guess. Run out. The potion the parfait makes for me. Oh, I must have talked too much. You talked too much. Karma puts her fingers to his lips as we stroll through the town. He shakes his head, making it clear he won't speak to me until later. When we arrive at the tavern, it's already dark. Karma pauses and turns to look at me. What? You know, when I smell Princess Henry Bonk, I'm glad I could make you laugh. Yeah. Well, of course I laughed. You sounded ridiculous. It's worth sounding ridiculous. Yeah, you smile. You and Rumple really are the same. The comment doesn't faze him. He smiles widely as he leaves for his room. I'm glad I could make you laugh. I cannot get those words out of my head, even though I'm supposed to be resting for the night. I think I should go and see if Karma's packed him in with urine or garland, because that's basically what he does every night, and I should yes. be used to it by now. Sleep happens to other people. Mm -hmm. I leave my room and go down to the reception room. Look, what, to look at the pile of magazines? Probably. Dolora and Parfait let me go to the forest at night alone now, since they know I am meeting up with Karma. Apparently the route there is completely bear-proof. <laughs> Parfait is in the reception room tonight reading a book. I was always told reading in the dark was bad for your eyes. Oh, princess, I didn't see you. I noticed that she's closed the book and I can now read the cover. As she's reading Cinderella. That's my fairy tale curse. I thought oh, I'd book, repeat then. it because we haven't mentioned it in the last five minutes. The Great War was caused by the fairy tales, right? Yes, that's right. And yet you are reading one. The curses are based off these fairy tales after all. But why are you reading Cinderella? My curse isn't anything like the fairy tales. It's reversed. True, but the morals remain the same. In order to become Cinderella, you must be good like her. Yeah, and go plant a tree in your mum's grave and get birds to nick stuff for you. Cinderella had everything handed to her by her fairy godmother or birds as, as far <laughs> as I'm told I had everything taken away by Prince, birds by birds <laughs> just everything stolen by birds <laughs> <laughs> just, just these flocks of sparrows stealing everything <laughs> the fuck was that it's just the room's bare <laughs> princess have you truly had everything taken away from you Compared to what I used to have, what I have now might as well be nothing. You have friendships and people who enjoy your company. Person. Person, not people. No one in this tavern enjoys my company. 
Are you sure about that, princess? I think you just have difficulty trusting that we all like you. Because we don't. Because we keep calling you an ass. Like me? Why would you like me? You've become like family here. You don't have to like your family. Yeah. God. Family just exists. That, that's all. It's nice if you like your family, but it is by no means a prerequisite. And if anyone's wondering, just because you're someone is your family, you don't need to keep them in your life if they're arseholes. So, yeah. blood is blood. It's not anything more than that. Don't... I mean, it is thicker than water, but that's irrelevant. Because it just literally is. Slightly. It just literally is. Yeah. And, um... Oh, there's, there's this bullshit thing that keeps on making the rounds, which I know is bullshit, and it's not where it's come from. The whole blood is thicker than water thing. It, people are now twisting it. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, which reverses oh. it. And it's just sort of like, no, that's not where that phrase comes from. Could you please stop doing that? I know you're trying to make a point, but it's a shit point. Make the point without bastardizing the phrase, please. And basically getting an argument from authority, because it's an old term. Yeah. And it's Really meant, obviously, we just had to completely change the arrangement of words. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Half an hour <that> same. <laughs> I haven't even been here that long. It doesn't matter. Everyone here at the Martian is family. Oh, Bert. Bert wants to stab you. A family. You are saying that everyone in the Martian is like family. Princess, you're one of my boarders. You're more than just a regular here. You are you live here with us. So like I said, you're family. Yeah, but you're soft in the head or something. So, you know, it's just... Basically. Sure I Everything is love. Everything is love. I speak more here with the people here than I've ever spoken to my own oh, family. Oh, face what the people who heard everything is awesome and didn't realise it was a satire. Oh, my God. You're right. <clears throat> In the place palace, I was always alone. The only person I could speak to with with was Fritz. Because he wouldn't leave you alone. You weren't yeah. allowed to. Are you going to watch Karma practice? I nodded in response. Be Which safe, kind of, princess. Just gives a kind of leering smile. <laughs> you going to watch Karma practice? Get all hot and sweaty. <laughs> As I head to the door, I recall what happened earlier today. Parfait, what is this potion you make for Karma? You mean the potion I make to change his voice? No, the other potion. <laughs> he begged me to help him when he first designed his disguise. Karma makes a beautiful woman, but he didn't think the illusion was complete without a convincing voice. And instead of, you know, doing something with it himself that he could maintain, he decided a potion was best. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know how picky he is. Something else on your mind, princess? Uh, Karma hides his curse, but you know must know the conditions for breaking it, don't you? Parfait does not answer. Or are you keep also keeping it a secret? Princess Henry Ponk, not everyone likes to talk about their curse. Oh, God, I think I've twigged how to break the curse. Someone has to fall in love with them normally. Uh, I was, uh, I'd already figured that out. I, I thought you knew. <laughs> No. <laughs> I thought as soon as he mentioned that everyone fell in love with him, I'm like, ah, oh, right, yes, that's that's you know the Beauty and the Beast curse. That's where I'd already gone with that one. I All mean, right. I'm assuming, but we could be wrong. I mean, we've been yeah. wrong in the past. I mean, in these visual novels, it doesn't happen very often. But now I actually can't think of a single instance where we've actually been wrong. There Except have been some, but I can just remember they went, oh, we're wrong. Not the actual thing was yeah. yeah i think selling on rising we were wrong about that because that was fucking weird well, um, we were mainly surprised that it turned out the aliens were racist uh, <laughs> the dark one what do you call it what do you call them the dark one it's got black skin you fucking racist <laughs> i think it would be better if you ask karma directly i just don't understand why he won't tell me everything when i'm trying to help him well you haven't told him everything you haven't told him everything Pretty much anything. Mm. Apart from I didn't like it. Apart from people at the palace were a bit, you know, didn't talk to me much. Yeah. Who would have guessed by the way I act now? Just as you think your good deeds are difficult, there is also something about Karma's curse that he can't come to terms with. I put my hand to the necklace around my neck. 
I still haven't performed any good deeds. Can I really do this? Well, considering you're probably going to ask how to make the potion to change the voice. Because that would be my first good deed, I would imagine. I'm going to try and be helpful. Yeah. I actually like karma and would like to learn about how to help. Well, if it's just good deeds, you could just go, I volunteer to do the dishes. Yeah, that's not really a good deed, though. That's just <laughs> doing yeah, chores. I suppose she benefits from having, to, uh, having clean dishes. Yeah. So. Unless still... she just likes eating with her hands. No, and nothing, nothing. They eat everything with their hands, even pasta. Oh. pasta I'm going pasta now. Chocolate sauce covered cake. You know when the cake gets really sloppy. Oh. <laughs> Making me hungry. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> Imagine her in that perfect outfit smeared with chocolate. <laughs> 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 I walk out the front door and into the forest. Well, it's that close. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I decide... Thought you had to travel some distance to get to the forest, but apparently not. Well, I decide not to think about all of this, at least not until later. I wish this was all simpler and calm and I wasn't cloaked in so many secrets. Karma suddenly naked. What? What? What the fuck's going on here? Mother is... Um, what's mother not? What is mother why wearing is, anything? I'm not sure. I think she's wearing something, but I'm not sure why we're at boob height. Yeah. And staring at her boobs. Yeah. <clears throat> this is slightly frightening. Mother, this... I went to town today. Oh, boobs are gone. What the hell? Oh, it's weird. I told you not to go into town. I don't remember her voice. Did your father take you? He told me that it would be fun. And was it? No. Everyone looked really angry at me, but I don't know why. I've told you before, haven't I, dearest one? The townsfolk are jealous of you. Jealous? They are bitter about their lot in life, and because of that, they will seek to use you for your status. You cannot trust them, Henry Ponk. You cannot trust anyone but me. Trusting others will only lead to heartbreak, Henry Ponk. You need only trust me, because I will never hurt you, except when I die. That would never explain why I'm apparently wearing a strapless swimming costume. Mm. That, yeah. Strapless open back swimming costume. I have been at the Martian for a couple of months now and I still haven't managed to do a single good deed. Today I went out to town with Waltz to buy ingredients for Parfait. The two of us have been very quiet, which is uncharacteristic for Waltz. Princess? What? Did Calm explain why he weren't coming? Oh, no, I changed it from Cockney, didn't I? Yeah. Did Calm explain why he wasn't coming with you today? <sighs> Princess? D does Waltz not like my company? Is that why he's asking why he had to fill in for Karma? He said he was tired. Ah. Oh. Waltz turns his head, his eyebrows furrowing in confusion. Sound feels different today. It does. Feels as if they're people watching us. How can you tell? They keep staring. With practice. Oh, I have a lot of eyes on me when I'm doing my puppet shows, after all. Even before then, I was used to uh, being watched, I guess. Before you were cursed? Why? Whatever, Pinocchio. Uh, <coughs> well, I guess I was more conspicuous as an adult, I guess. Peter Pan, of... surely. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, an adult oh right you have the neverland curse you remember ah yes i have the neverland curse i'll tell you i had my tavern once you're stuck as a child when you should be a man right it's a little inconvenient but i've gotten used to it i did have to get a small stool to reach things a stool to reach things on the uh, top of the cupboard so. waltz is so much more straightforward about his curse than karma the two of us go into a store where we find the little cups that Parfait asked us to buy. After I pay, Waltz automatically picks up the bag. His help is nice for a change, and I've become so accustomed to carry the bags on my own. <clears throat> Sir, have you made any progress on your good deeds? You can see from my necklace that I have not. But you have changed. I still don't see how I have changed at all. Karma hasn't taught me anything about doing good. Sometimes in order to do good, you need to realise some things about yourself first. Like which bits of shit. <laughs> Maybe calm is not so bad at helping you with that. 
He is selfish, flamboyant, and acts as if the world revolves around him. But you're still partnered with him. I am. I'm okay with Karma's company. Most of the people judge and shun me. But Karma hasn't done that, and he's even mentioned enjoying my company. I've become more tolerant of him, too. I like your company. I tolerate yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, princess. That's it. Waltz's eyes light up and I see him pointing ahead to a crowd of people gathered around the centre of town. A woman stands in the middle of the crowd telling people's fortunes. What, for free? <laughs> what a mad woman is this? It's going on. On a weird street. Well, it's more of a hat, I guess. But, um, you know, <laughs> obviously on the ground to put money in, not on her head. That oh, right, yeah. Out. I was a bit confused then, but uh, thanks for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> she has a hat, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> what? How does this woman eat? <laughs> We should go out surfing and get our fortunes out. Come on, they should just read their palm and scream. The crowd around the woman only grows larger until half of the plaza has been taken up. I find myself pushed around in the crowd as I try to follow Waltz. Kraus is dense and in no time I have lost him. Waltz? <laughs> out here, help me! <clears throat> I call for him, but I do not see him over the dozens of people in front of me. Well, he's quite short, isn't he? Mm. So, you know. Yeah, he's a child. Yeah. I will wait for him at the outskirts of the crowd. He should be able to find me. Make my so way how out. Many, of... How many people are going to mysteriously lose their wallets, do you think? <laughs> I make my way out of the crowd and to the edges of the alleyway. Ugh, but Wolf still does not appear. Ten minutes go by and I consider walking back into the crowd when I hear a voice behind me. Are they looking for someone then? I, don't know. It's... I feel someone grab my hand. I slap them away and take a step back. When I turn, I find a man standing behind me in the alleyway. I don't mean to start with you. What do you want? I'll have you turn to Paris, Princess Annie Bonk. Mm hmm? You know who I am. I'll die, Princess. I can lead you back to the palace. Well, I know the way, so f why don't you just piss off? And who are you? Person who's obviously not important because you don't have eyes. I'm oh, working for the king. I'm part of the secret police or something. But the king does not remember me. The only people that would remember me are witches, fairies and those with the curse. So who exactly is this man? You're lying. Princess, why do I have a lot of you? Now come. I'm sure everyone in the palace will be happy to see you. Ugh. The man grabs my hand roughly and begins trying to pull me through the alleyway. First thing I try to do is scream, but the man clamps his free hand. Fight! Fight, fight. I wonder who's fighting. It's probably going to be Karma just comes out from behind, isn't it? And just stabs him. Just out of the shadows. Yeah. Ha ha! Stab. And he goes back into the shadows and vanish. <laughs> but the man claps his free hand <laughs> over my mouth. The crowd is getting further from us and no one can see, in the sh see us in the shadows. Princess, I'll swear my word and bring you back to the palace. Nah, fight, fight him. Don't, don't, don't. right. This is just, this is just basic safety. Don't let yourself ta get taken to the second location. Mm. If you are attacked, uh, once they take you to the second location, bad things happen. Yes. So, so try and get away before then. Fight back. I have to fight back. Maybe I can still draw people's attention to me. I try to square my, square my way out of the man's arms, but it does not work. He chuckles lightly at me until I elbow him in the stomach. <laughs> For the few moments that I am free, I try to run, but all too soon the man grabs me again with the same punishing grip over my mouth and knows to stop me from screaming. You're real thirsty, one, ain't you? I feel like I might faint. In one last attempt, I get free. I tug at the man's hand down with my own and manage to shift it just enough so I can bite down on it. Ah. Oh. The man screams in pain, his grip finally loosening. I can hear him curse as I run away from him. I approve of her fighting style. I do, yeah. Face summed up as fuck you. Fuck that's, you. That's I'm, her I'm winning. Style. <laughs> <clears throat> a few minutes later, I realise I've gone in the wrong direction. I soon come to a dead end and I can hear the man running up behind me. There we go. I knew it was going to be karma. What is this I see before me? Is it a dagger? Probably. I look up to see karma standing on the rooftop right above us in his disguise, holding a sword, a broad grin on his face. Ma'am, you might hurt yourself playing with that sword. You might want to put it down. Right, you've already been bitten by one woman. If a woman was f 
brandishing no, a sword. by people who are by someone who has a weapon. Yeah. Uh, what is this, sir? <clears throat> you feel threatened by me? You should. Karma jumps down from the building and raises his sword in front of his, him. His eyes are angry, his earlier jovial personality falling away. Anyone that attacks a lady has to pay for the crime. Karma rushes forward, moving faster than I can see, even as in his long dress. The glint of the sword causes the man to fall backwards, loosening his grip on me. I step back from the man's hold and I watch Karma point his sword at the man's neck. Now I have a sword <clears throat> Do not. Do you really want to test your luck, sir? Do you feel lucky, punk? No, it is like worth it. <sighs> the man runs off, leaving me alone with Karma in the alleyway. What's this? You were a lot cocky just a few minutes ago. I breathe out slowly as relief washes over me. <laughs> Princess? Waltz approaches from where the man had run. So, did you meet the coward, uh, the coward fellow? Oh, uh, the coward fellow on your way out, on your way here. Oh, I, I, I bumped into a man and looked as if he was running from death. Then I turned around here and see you with a massive sword. So I can think I can guess what was going on with that. Um, oh, I feel oddly accomplished. Karma and Waltz's voice become faded and indistinct as my vision blurs. I'm suddenly light on my feet. All the adrenaline from earlier has dissipated into thin air. I feel probably like I'm going to throw up. Tired. Dunk. It's, it's not tired. Princess? Yay, collapse. Uh, before I can collapse, I feel arms pulling me back up. Rest easy, Princess Henry Punk. I close my eyes and fall into blankness. And I think that is a perfect opportunity for us to go, bye! Bye, uh, I guess. Uh, or, yeah. or go and see what? the next bit on Corpse's channel. Yeah. So. Yeah.